Is there anyone out there listening to me? I can't hear your voice at all. Perhaps you could write me or phone. Let me know if I'm still here alone. Yes, this is Nightshow, and I bid you welcome. Where were we? Yeah, look, we're back. We're back. We? What does he mean, we? Israel Campbell, the star, creator, everything of the hit show Circumcise Me, is uh, going to be calling up. We got Skype in the morning and Skype at night, so you'll see him. You'll see who I'm talking to. You know what that's called? Television. Now, the model tough. Marseille. The city of Marseille, France, has given a bronze fountain to the city of Jerusalem as a show of friendship. France? giving something to Israel. You want to talk miracles? Anyway, they're giving uh, the mayor of um, Jerusalem near Barkat. Uh, Thank Marseille mayor Jean-Claude Godin. I thought it was a picture for the Yankees. Oh, that's Chad Godin. Uh, for his gift of the Fontaine Longchamp, which stands more than 11 feet high, the fountain, which is on its way to Israel as we speak, because I brought it over to UPS, is an exact replica of the famous fountain on Marseille's Boulevard Longchamp. So you see, they're getting together. You think, yeah, you know, what's the generalization? The French, well, maybe they don't. But they do. They do. They're giving Israel a fountain. A fountain. A fountain. Longchamp, which is a steakhouse, isn't it? Longchamp. All right, well, that's the thing. Congratulations, thanks, uh, on behalf of uh, all the people in Israel who don't know me, thanks for the fountain. The Gibby. Remember the Gibby? The Gibby Award. Not so nice. The Gibby Award goes to Aflac. Let me say, I'm looking right in the camera when I say this. I am in no way endorsing or condoning what my pal... Gilbert Gottfried did and said immediately after the horrible earthquake and tsunami in Japan. I am in no way giving a thumbs up or endorsing that or anything. I'm they Aflac's getting it for one word hypocrisy. You don't hire Gilbert Gottfried because he can sound like a duck. And then when he is Gilbert Gottfried go, oh, we can't have this. We can't have this. That's so insensitive. No, that's Gilbert Gottfried. Is it insensitive? Of course. How does Gilbert make his money? What, what did he wait, 10 more minutes after 9-11 to do the same stuff? So, again, I'm not condoning what Gilbert did. I'm not condoning what he said in any way, shape, or form, but I'm saying Aflac, Aflac, Give me a break. Gilbert Gottfried, you hired him. You know what? You live with Gilbert, and that's the way it is. You get the Gibby. Now, this is going to be great. We, I'm, I'm going to talk to Yisrael Campbell, the creator and star of um, the hit uh, show, the hit one-man show, Circumcise Me. He's down here in Florida. He's going to give us tour dates where he's going afterwards, but... Um, stick around. This is going to be fabulous. Hello, Yisrael. How are you? Thanks for calling. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. You are the star and the creator of um, Circumcise Me, which um, is at the Aventura Arts and Cultural Center through Sunday, March 27th. Yes. Um, uh, I think this would be a good time for you to tell me and the millions of people watching exactly what Circumcise Me is. Circumcise Me is a one-man show that I developed over a number of years that tells the story of how I went from being Roman Catholic, uh, a kid from suburban Philadelphia, through three conversions to Judaism, and then I made Aliyah. I emigrated to Israel, became a citizen of the state of Israel, and, uh, and it's that story uh, told in a mostly funny way. I want to say that uh, it was obvious 
first time I saw you that you were Roman Catholic at one point. That's not true. I mean, I'm <laughs> saying, you know, what, what I'm saying. But no, your, your, your story, it's one of those stories that I don't think, first of all, if someone wrote it as fiction and tried to make a movie, he'd get kicked out on his tuchus. Right. Uh, because right. who are you kidding? Right. Who's going to believe that? Who's going to believe it? And, and you, uh, your, your uh, born name is, is Christopher. So you were born Christopher Campbell. Roman yes. Catholic, and you went through um, a lot of of heavy stuff. I, I, I mean, it's not just a spiritual journey. There were there were a lot of problems along the way. Correct? Yes, there was. I mean, the journey started at 16 years old. I found out I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, and I found out I had to stop using alcohol and drugs, and that started me on a spiritual journey, which 10 or 11 years later ended me up at Judaism's door. Then there was the problems within the community of Israel, you know, who accepted this conversion, who accepted that conversion. And uh, and then in Israel, uh, on July 31st, 2002, a bomb exploded in the Hebrew University and killed nine people, two of them my close friends, Ben Blutstein and Marla Bennett. So there was, there's kind of, uh, there's joy and, and sadness at each level. Um, when you first um, discovered, when you first realized that you had substance abuse problems. Um, what didn't you find in the Roman Catholic religion? I, I, uh, for whatever reason, and, and I, I, I don't particularly blame Roman Catholicism. It just didn't speak to me. It, it, it you know, it a, a very superficial and kind of broad stroke view of Christianity is to say that it's based on. A belief, a, uh, a faith that Jesus is God or Jesus is the, your savior of some sort, however that works. Right. Where, whereas what spoke to me about Judaism when I first approached it was when the rabbi said to me that God only wanted to hear about the sins that I had actually made amends for on Yom Kippur. That made sense to me. That I could, in Christianity, I used to say to myself, how can I live my life any way I want and then make confession and be clean? <laughs> Like, I gotta say I'm sorry to the person I harmed. That's, and so, uh, and whereas Judaism wasn't so much concerned in what I believe, it's not entirely true. You, you have a 3,000 year old discussion that you write down almost everything, you're gonna find pretty much any opinion on paper. But by and large, Judaism is concerned with what I do, not what I believe. And that made sense to me from the very beginning, even before I was Jewish. Um, I'm assuming it went reform, conservative, orthodox, correct? No, an orthodox, <laughs> yes, yes, no. it is. <laughs> hey, you know? Well, I, I, I must say, me. though, I must say, I, I, the warmest, most Jewish welcome to Judaism, I, I did go reform, conservative, orthodox. The warmest, most Jewish welcome to Judaism I ever received was in the reform movement. You know, 36 times it says in the Torah to welcome the stranger. We suck at that. <laughs> no, really, Shotten, as it's mentioned once, nobody's wearing wool and linen. <laughs> Don't mix milk and meat. Three times, we have books and books and books about not mixing milk and meat. 36 times it says, welcome the stranger. We walk around like this. Welcome the stranger. What could God have meant? <laughs> it's Kabbalah. <laughs> so I, I really, I, I always want to say that that, you know, my conversion to reform, I, I called it my conversion to Judaism then before I knew. But it was, people would say to me, tell me, explain to me, why this interests you? What's your spiritual journey about? I described my Orthodox conversion as if you tried to explain to the DMV why you wanted to drive. <laughs> Imagine if you went in and they said, fill out this form, and you said, but wait, let me tell you why I want to drive. I want to deliver meals to the homebound. They would say, just fill out the form and step back from the counter. See, no, no, I want to take people that are sick to the hospital. They would say, sir, fill out the form. No one has to get hurt here. <laughs> it just wasn't, you know, it didn't, it was different. Um, how did your family react when this uh, started? I always say that I didn't show up dressed like this to my family and scream, Goyam! <laughs> Ah, uh, I was hoping for some home movies. For my family, it was a very slow transition. It was almost seven years between the reform conversion and the orthodox conversion. It was really my last trip through my parents' house on my way to Israel that I was 
Shomer Shabbat in a traditional way. And on Friday morning, I sat them down, I explained, we have to leave this light on, turn that light off, put aluminum foil on the sensor in the driveway, leave the door open because I can't carry a key because you don't have a fishing line around your neighborhood. And I got through the whole thing. My mother's complaining the whole way. My father doesn't say a word until I say, and we have to turn the light off in the refrigerator. And my father says, you think God cares if the light goes on in your refrigerator when you open the door? So it was it was a quite a ultimately they were very accepting. Did I read that you you've had uh how many circumcisions? Three circumcisions, which is not a religious covenant. It's no. a fetish. You got anything left? <laughs> Thank I'm God, I do. <laughs> no, you know, everything after the first is as a, you know, what we what they say in Hebrew, a hatafat ambri. Now when they say things in Hebrew in America, it's so you won't understand what they're talking Exactly, exactly. Because Hatavat Embri sounds like Hachikichiwa, <laughs> which sounds like a drink that should come with an umbrella in it. <laughs> Listen, you got it. Let's talk about yes. what, what, um, what theater, theater goers, lovers of the theater, will see when they, when they come to the show. I, I, I know it uses a lot of slides. It uses a lot of stuff. So explain, break down the show for people. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was doing as an hour of stand up. For many years and kind of I would tell the story and if they laughed at one part I would tell more of that story and if, and then I get to the end inevitably I'd look at my watch and say okay in five minutes I have to do the Orthodox conversion uh, move to Israel and get married again and inevitably it would just get squashed at the end and so when I brought in Sam Gold the director he really helped me like make the dramatic arc and we added the video elements and the sound elements the lighting elements the set elements it's still it's a one man show it's a 75 minute monologue but it's told with those elements to help kind of move the story along and and because it's now a written out show every bit is there's nothing tangential it really keeps the move, story moving along um, I know that that you uh, the the show's been on in in New York. It, it was in the East Village. You got a great review in the Times. Yeah, uh, we ran eight months. We ran. We were supposed to run eight weeks, and we ran eight months. In New yeah, that, that's a, a, that's where you were in. Uh, what theater up there? We we're in the Bleecker Street Theater, yeah. Forty Five Bleecker. Oh, I know where that is. I used to live on Thompson Street. Um, the Aventura Arts and Cultural Center is nothing to sneeze at. Whew, it's a brand new theater, just opened in October. It sits on the last piece of undeveloped land in Aventura on the water, on the intracoastal waterway. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's worth coming down just to sit on the veranda, even if you don't come into the show. Um, and like I said, you're going to be there through the 27th. Where, where to next, Israel Campbell? After next, the, uh, um, Next to, uh, we're doing one show at the JCC in Miami in South, the following Thursday after I close in Aventura. Then out to Palo Alto and then Minnesota, Milwaukee, Dallas and Houston and then home to Israel for Pesach. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so, uh, every performance is at eight o'clock, correct? Yes, although on Sunday there's a matinee also. We do Wednesday, Thursday. We're off on Friday night. We're off on Saturday afternoon. We do a Saturday night show just after Shabbos, and then two on Sunday. Off on Friday night, off on I Saturday know. afternoon. And we did that for eight months off Broadway. Not, never had a show on Shabbos, and we ran for eight months. Israel Campbell, good luck, man. I know Thank it's a great you. show. I'm going to try to make it down there. Please do. Um, I will talk to you soon. Thank you for calling night. Thank you. Thank you. Be well and pour him some ass. Skype. All right. Who knew there were other people on the other end of the phone when I was talking to them? Israel Campbell, our first Skype interview. Came out great. I'll, and you never forget your first. You know, I'll never forget Israel for this. Thanks so much for calling up, man. He was great. you got to check the show out when you can, when it comes to a city near you. Now it's time for the Yiddish phrase of the week. Do you know why? Yiddish, favorite, love it, grandma, grandpa, tried to get it by me, yeah, uh, didn't think I understood, but I understood. This is the Yiddish phrase of the week. Af yenim's tuchis is got sepachin. Someone else's butt is easy to smack. It didn't really say butt, but I put it in there. Good night, everybody. Good night from me. Good night from, really, the brains of the operation, the monkey. We'll see you soon. Nigel's back, baby. See you soon.